All right, let's get to it. We've already been looking at some of the tools in the palettes underneath the timeline. Let's start looking at the timeline itself and how we can rearrange it for the quickest color correction workflow. One of the ways you can sort your timeline is using A and C mode. A mode is the order in which your clips were edited and is usually the default on the color page reflecting the timeline on the edit page. C mode, on the other hand, which you can switch to by clicking on View, Timeline, Thumbnail Mode, Source, C mode, rearranges your clips in the order that they were recorded. Now, why would we want to do that? We can still see all the same clips, but now they've been completely jumbled up. Well, the benefit is that clips that were shot at more or less the same time will appear next to each other, even if they're separated by long gaps in the final edit itself which means it will be much easier to identify and group clips with similar looks or adjustment requirements. So in this case, I've got six shots of a biker on the streets in London captured on the same day with the same camera and the same exposure settings. So I may as well flag all of these to identify their similarities. Another thing I could do is add them all to the same group, uh, but that's for another video. If I was to switch back to edit mode or A mode, I'll reveal that these clips have now been scattered into the correct order for the edit. But as you can imagine, this will be trickier to grade as a single unit. So when it comes to things like neutralization and matching, it might be better to do these side by side. Another thing we could do is filter by flags and markers. So let's say I've been asked to incorporate sky replacement in some of the clips and I've indicated these clips with a yellow flag. Inside of the color page, I'll be able to use the drop-down menu next to the word clips at the top and indicate that I only want to show clips with a yellow flag on them. And in this case, I can get busy with my sky replacement and not have to be interrupted by dozens of unrelated clips. When I drop this menu down, you can see there's quite a lot of different ways of filtering the timeline. For example, I could decide to check up on any clips that I might have overlooked by selecting ungraded clips, and in this case it's all of them. Later on we'll be looking at groups, and I could decide to take a look at those, or take a look at the clips based on some specific tools that I've applied to them. The last thing I want to look at is creating smart filters. If you've watched the tutorial on smart bins, this will be totally familiar to you. A smart filter is being able to identify which clips you want to see based on some very specific criteria. It works on the basis of any all, and you have the option to add as many additional rules to your filter as you want. You can then give your filter a name, and specify your properties. Once you create a smart filter, you'll be able to access it inside of the drop-down menu next to clips. So this is the one I've just created. I could choose to rename it, edit it to introduce or remove criteria, or to delete it. By the way, since we're looking at timelines, I should also mention the lightbox option in the top right corner. When I click on lightbox, I'm going to hide most of the interface, revealing only the timeline spread out across the page. For a longer project, this would show up as dozens of clips organized from top to bottom, left to right, with the timeline on the right-hand side reflecting which part of the film I'm on. You can change the size of your thumbnails in the top right corner. In the top left, we have the ability to turn on color controls, which means you'll be able to continue making color grade changes to your clips. Uh, this isn't really recommended unless you're using an external monitor to view your clips. We can also continue filtering our clips like we were doing outside of the light box using the sidebar menu on the left. And we can hide and reveal the information about each clip by activating the info button next to that. The light box mode can be quite handy for a variety of uses. It can help you identify and select a multitude of clips to perhaps indicate groups or scenes without being restricted to a single horizontal line. When you're done doing your work, just click on Lightbox again to go back into the standard color page. Thank you for watching, and until next time!